Hey, this is Mark Goldberg from Mark Vlogs Watches. And as part of a continuing service, I'm going to answer a question that was delivered to me in the comments of my video section. So if you think I don't read the comments, well, I often do. Um, mind you, I think it's uh, sometimes better that you email me your questions because then they don't get kind of lost in a, in a queue of a bunch of comments. So I'm going to put the email uh, a little bit later where you can uh, send your questions. But uh, today we're going to be answering a question for Eddie Rodriguez. And the question is, hmm, should we proceed with the question? No. First, we should do the quick fist watch check. Here it is. And today, guys, I am wearing the blue Pelagos. Pelagos in blue with the in-house movement. It's got a lot of text, but it gives you something to do in the bathroom if you should forget your iPhone. Okay, now before we move into the question, a quick reminder, if you would like to support and help this channel, and I hope you would, um, Let Dogs Be Dogs is a book that I co-authored with my buddy here, but I'm the handsome one. And uh, if you're a dog lover, um, you should get this book. And if you're not a dog lover, give it to one. <laughs> it's on Amazon and in uh, bookstores, you know, pretty much everywhere. Eddie Rodriguez asks the following question. He says, Mark, I've gotten a call from the authorized dealer and I have the opportunity to purchase a steel ceramic, am I crooked? I think, guys, I think I'm crooked. Hang on, let's fix this. There, I feel a little bit less crooked now. Um, he says, guys, I, I have the opportunity to buy a steel ceramic Daytona from the AD at MSRP. And he says, should I do it? And his question then goes on to say specifically because um, I could resell it, right? He said, I think they're going for around $20,000 on eBay. So should I buy it to resell uh, specifically on eBay? And you know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of considerations here. So let's just kind of talk our way through this situation. First, if you have the opportunity to buy a steel Daytona at MSRP, do I think you should do it? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think that you should do it. Now, should you do it with the express purpose of reselling it? Okay, let's talk this out for a quick sec. Before we go anywhere, I have it understood that the more popular of the two uh, dials that are available would be the white dial with the black rim around all of the sub dials. Guys, is that called the Panda or is that called the reverse Panda? I, I can never get keep that one straight. So of the two dial, the other one's a black dial. And of the two dials, I believe that that white dial with the, bl uh, with the black rimming the black mascara around the subdials, I believe that's the more popular of the two. And I think it's called the Panda or the reverse, but Panda, but somebody will tell me in the comments. Now, MSRP on that watch is $12,400. And we have to factor in sales tax. I assume you're gonna pay sales tax. So let's round off and say your sales tax is gonna be around $1,000. So you'll have $13,400 in it first. Um, you'll immediately have equity. That is true. So if there's any chance that you would actually love that watch, um, I think you should buy it with the, expect per with the express purpose of keeping it. I know there is money to be made perhaps on a watch like this, and we will talk about that in a couple of moments, but I'm not hugely in favor of collectors viewing watches as investments because if you're not careful, eventually you will get hurt if you're just... Um, you know, a constant advantage taker. Now, I, I don't think that's Eddie's situation here, um, but Eddie, I think um, it would be much better if you could buy that watch and enjoy it. But let's say, for example, that's not gonna happen. Your only goal would be to sell it. You, for whatever reason, you just don't especially like that watch. Okay, let's go through some eventualities here. You pay 12.4 plus tax, that has you up to $13,400 on the watch. Now, um, Let's talk real quick about the experience at the authorized dealer. If there is any way you can possibly get them to leave any or all of the stickers on that watch, that would be huge. Uh, that would be a really big deal because if you could sell an unworn Daytona that still has stickers, that's gonna be a much easier sell than one that has been de-stickered than one that has been slightly molested. I mean, they're all saleable, don't get me wrong. Um, at least in the Daytona. 
But um, if you can get them to leave stickers on, that would be for the best. If they won't leave stickers on, if they're like, no, guy, we have to like take some of the stickers off, then I would at least where I use, see if you could get them to leave the case back sticker on. Uh, because uh, you could tell them, you know, you just want to protect it when you're wearing it. And uh, a lot of times they'll do that. Also, there are stickers that cover the crown guards. You know, right in, right in the crown guard area, it's a tiny little sticker that covers the crown guards and maybe they'll forget those or leave them on. That would be nice. So that would be the first thing, uh, would be the stickers. If you can get them with stickers on, so much the better. The warranty card, they're probably going to make you fill it out right then, right there. But if they could leave it blank and open, um, that would be good. Now, do you want to tell them some kind of nonsense? I don't know. Like, do you want to say, hey, I might want to put my brother-in-law's name on the warranty card. I got to decide if I'm going to give it to him as a gift or not. Could, could we leave that open? I mean, these are things that you could maybe put to the authorized dealer to, to see. But in, in most cases, let's presume, let's presume first that you're in the United States. Because um, if you're in the UK, this is going to go a whole different way. But if you're in the United States, then you might be able to talk them into leaving on a sticker or two. You probably won't talk them into leaving the warranty card open. They'll probably insist that you know it gets filled out right there. That's fine. Do it. If you're in the UK, I'm not sure you would have even asked me this question because you would know that in the UK, they will withhold the warranty card and they will hold it for one year. They will de-sticker the watch. Uh, automatically and they will hold the warranty card for one year. By the way, why do they do that in the UK but not in the USA? I, I think it's a matter of consumer law. Believe me, I think they would do it in the USA if they could get away with it. Uh, I just think that there's just consumer protection laws here in the United States that don't allow for that. Um, and I think that uh, Geneva knows where they can do it and where they can't. Uh, by Geneva, I mean Rolex, the corporation, the manufacturer of the watch. Because remember, the AD is just an independent business guy who has a distribution agreement with Rolex in Switzerland, the big corporation, the manufacturer. Okay, so again, we're presuming that this is in the USA. So let's say now you've walked out of the store with a watch that is largely de-stickered, but maybe has a sticker or two somewhere left on it. The warranty card is filled out. It's filled out in your name. Okay, now you have a $13,400 watch after you've paid sales tax. What do you do next? Well, yes, you could list it on eBay. But my question is, are you a really savvy eBay seller? Are you a really savvy eBay seller? And by that I mean, do you have a, a fair amount of experience selling high ticket items on eBay? And have you got a reasonable amount of experience buying high ticket items on eBay? Do you have eBay feedback at 100% favorable rating of 100 feedbacks or more? And if you can't answer yes to all of those questions, then where are you? I would avoid eBay. Uh, and I'll just briefly walk you through why. Because eBay offers a tremendous number of buyer protections. So the buyer, a savvy buyer, is pretty safe buying on eBay. But a, um, but a, a sweet, tender, innocent, virginal seller uh, on eBay is at great risk because there are many scams and i'll just run you you know through a couple of those scams real quick somebody takes your watch uh, that you've sold it to and um, and then they open a dispute with ebay and paypal and they say that you sent the watch you sent the paperwork but the watch box was empty there was actually no watch in there uh, that could cause you a problem if that happens um, or let's say they decide they're going to return it and you say, well, hey, I didn't authorize a return, but they claim you didn't describe it quite right. So let's say you're not a real savvy seller and they're able to use eBay protection to say that the item is not as described, which is easy to do if you're a savvy fraudulent buyer and you're buying from a sweet, tender and innocent newbie seller, which is presumably where you would be, Eddie. And um, so let's say while, while you have that watch for the day or two that you possess it as the fraudster, you open it up, you take out the Daytona movement, you plop something else in and you close it back up and, and you, know, you send it back home and you get your money back. Um, but you now have a, a Franken watch, which is you know, uh, worth, you know, it's just destroyed most of the value of the watch. So I guess what I wanna say is there's an awful lot that can go wrong selling on eBay unless you're really savvy. And I don't think you are really savvy, Eddie, or you wouldn't be asking me the question. Now, let's further assume, though, that you plow ahead and um, you, you sell this for uh, $19,000. 
let's just use that as a figure because I think you could accomplish that um, as, a, as a seller even if you're not really well known on eBay. Um, and um, so you've made $5,600 in profit, but from that we have to deduct the eBay seller fee. Now, I'm not 100% on this. Guys, you can correct me uh, if I'm wrong in the comments, but I think that eBay seller fee in the watch category tops out at $750, and you've made um, $5,600, so now you're down to $5,4847.50 you know, in profit. That's pretty damn good, $4,700 in profit. That's pretty damn good for what you had to do which was you know, a quick buy and a quick sell. But for that $4,700, you're taking what I consider to be unacceptable levels of risk because you could wind up with $4,700 extra in your pocket or you could wind up with nothing if you, know, if, you, if you screw up and you are subjected to fraud. And don't say it doesn't happen, it happens all the time. I will make you guys a video about how to safely buy and more importantly, how to safely sell on eBay or as safe as one can get it. Um, and in fact, I have done a video on five ways to buy used Rolex watches, uh, savvy, safe ways, or how to keep it as safe as you can. And I'll put that in the description here of this video. And also you can email me at markgoldberg8 at gmail.com with questions. But um, I don't love this whole eBay thing unless you're really savvy because you're taking a gamble. Would you go to a casino near you and put $4,700 on red, you know, on the roulette wheel where you have, you know, like a 48.7 chance of winning. It's kind of like 50-50. Well, I think your odds on eBay are a little better, but I still think you would be gambling with a whole lot of money. Um, actually, I'm so sorry, I, I really put the odds wrong. Would you put down 13,400, because that's your full investment. Would you put that down against a profit? Uh, on red, a profit of $4,700. I mean, the stakes are quite high here. Now, if you wanna lower the risk, you can do that, but then you have to lower the potential reward. Also, you could call a dealer, uh, and this is probably how I would go if I were you. You could call a dealer and you could sell that watch and they're going to probably give you, I bet you'll get like 15, 15, five, maybe 16. Uh, if you are a used watch dealer, guys, and you buy stuff like this, what would you pay for a, a, a new Daytona like this? Especially the white dial with the little Panda subdials. Um, you're not gonna get 20 out of a dealer. Why? Because a dealer's gotta do the same thing that you're talking about doing. Invest a whole lot of money, find a buyer, sell it to that buyer, hope that he isn't a victim of fraud, and then warranty, warranty the watch for a year or two. So they do add value to the watch and they're entitled to make some money in return for doing so. Um, and so your $13,400 watch, you're now making a couple thousand dollars on. And I think that's the only reasonably safe way to do it. If you know, you're selling to a really um, uh, well-known, legitimate uh, aftermarket watch buyer, okay? So you wanna stick to the really well-known gray market or, um, or used guys, do your research, talk to people. Um, there, But there are a handful, I can think of five or six of those people right now where I wouldn't hesitate to wire money or to send a watch uh, um, and, and have them look it over and give me, um, and give me a quote on it. Um, and that's another thing. If you have to send this watch to somebody for a quote, well, by the time you pay you know, the FedEx and the insurance to get it to them, you'll have $100 invested in just getting it to them. And then you know, maybe you'll like the price they give you, maybe you won't. So there's a lot to think about here. You know, the, the final consideration is, will you make an enemy out of the authorized dealer? You know, if you're not delicate with this, yeah, you, you know, um, you might be fucking up a relationship with the AD here. If you're high enough on the list to get that Daytona, then maybe you ought to keep it a little while and see what other good things come out of that relationship. And you know, here's my kind of like my final thought here. I'm not entirely sure that this was a whole legitimate question because you sound kind of new. You sound a little innocent here, Eddie. Like you're not, you don't know so much, um, you know, about how this works. And if that's the case, why are you being offered a steel Daytona? You, you'd have to be pretty high up on the VIP list these days 
at a Rolex authorized dealer in order to be get the phone call that you say you've gotten. So if you did get that phone call, well, good for you. Maybe you've hit the lottery, but um, at the same token, maybe you've just you know, discovered the golden goose and she's laying her first golden egg, you, you know, maybe you could form a relationship with this dealer. If you've got the money to be playing around in this marketplace, then my advice to you is maybe you found the golden goose, don't cut her head off, see what can come of this relationship. Maybe you could develop a nice little collection and then eventually part with them. I will make you guys a video on how to sell watches on eBay the safest way possible. Until that time, I appreciate you being with me. I'm trying hard to be one of your favorite YouTubers. Um, and so to that end, if you would leave me a comment, like this video, and if you haven't done it already, subscribe so we can do this again. Thanks guys, Mark Goldberg. Peace out. Paint the sky.